It's time for the history of Ubisoft. Ubisoft will be created in Brittany, a province of France in a small village by the five Gilliman brothers. Their parents ran a declining business that sold equipment to farmers. Since the brothers wanted to help the family business, they started looking into new businesses. This is when Claude got into CD Audio. This soon caused the family to sell computers and open a new store where they sold electronics among their typical farming equipment. Among the new electrical products that they sold were video games. Claude would soon take a trip to the UK and realize that they were paying double of what the public in the UK was. Claude soon thought this may be a good business opportunity. This trip led to the family opening a mail order company in 1984. Soon their servers proved to be popular and the brothers switched to selling their product to retailers that wanted a good price. Since Claude noticed the price difference, he started to import the games to France and the brothers were able to sell them for half the price of competitors. And that's how a band of brothers started Ubisoft in 1986. Soon after the small company's success, the brothers started to think about making games. Rather than recruiting developers to their Paris office, the Guillemont brothers decided to lure people in with a literal castle for a work environment. Hey Phil, where do you work? Oh, you know, the old historic castle down the lane. Ubisoft only kept the castle for 18 months. It started to cost them too much. According to Ives, it costed $1,000 a month just to heat one room of the castle during the winter. In Ubisoft's early days, the company tried to be in close ties to Nintendo and Sega, which may seem like a good idea now, but back then, most developers were working for Apple and Enigma, so it seemed like an odd choice. The company would relocate to Paris after leaving the castle. This would cause Michael Ansel to leave as he was still just a kid and couldn't support himself in Paris. Ubisoft was very open to having developers leave and come back as long as they had an idea. In his time away, Michael Ansel would come up with Rayman, and would later pitch it to Ubisoft with Frederick Horde. The pitch was well received, but the console it was originally designed for never saw the light of day, that being the Super Nintendo CD system. After this, Ubisoft realized they needed to reorganize the project and they needed to gain money. The game went from having two people as developers to over a hundred. At the time, this was a big deal because development teams of this size were only in Japan and the US. Ubisoft wanted to be Japan's giant, so they wanted to release the game on a new console before anybody else. Rayman would come out on the PSX in 1995, when only nine games were available at the time, so the press was basically forced into reviewing it. Now this may seem like it's all going pretty well, but it actually took 18 months before the game became profitable. Rayman and its sequels, Rayman 2 and 3, would soon combine to sell over 20 million copies, making Michael Ansel's creation the first legitimate hit series in Ubisoft history. This success convinced the company to go public in 1996 to raise more money for its internal development endeavors. Soon Ubisoft would open studios in Montreal and Japan to make sure they could receive dev kits as soon as possible. This is when Ubisoft started to get into a rut. Creating new brands proved to be difficult for the young company. The brothers soon would get the idea to leave one person in charge of Ubisoft and let the others branch out. Gerard would soon start Gameloft and Michael would start a mobile game company. Ubisoft would sell the rights to these companies and by doing so, their share price would multiply by five. Ubisoft would purchase Red Storm Entertainment, the owner of the Tom Clancy franchise, in the year 2000. This would help Ubisoft break into the American marketplace. This also allowed the company to widen its scope into PC and online gaming. Few developers actually wanted to develop for Microsoft's new console, the Xbox, so it seemed like a risky business venture when Ubisoft decided to do a console release of Ghost Recon. But Ubisoft pulled through, see they believed console connectivity was going to be huge. And they were right. To date, the Rainbow Six and Ghost Recon franchises have sold 23 and 18 million units respectfully. Ubisoft would continue growing, but possibly their most beloved franchise wouldn't see the light of day until Ubisoft would acquire the entertainment division of the learning company after it was absorbed by Red Storm a year after they purchased them. 
This acquisition brought many franchises to the company, Chessmaster, Myst, and Prince of Persia, just to name a few. Myst was seen as being the big ticket item of this acquisition, but it was actually Prince of Persia that would lead to Ubisoft's next big franchise. You see, when Ubisoft was developing a new Prince of Persia game, the company thought they may be able to create something new. This would lead to the very first Assassin's Creed game, which today may be Ubisoft's biggest franchise. Ubisoft is unique in the gaming industry. Not every company has to deal with a conglomerate threatening to take you over. For years, Ubisoft had to deal with Vivendi and its very real potential takeover. Ubisoft has since managed to regain control of its stock and stay independent, but this fight didn't come without losses. Vivendi actually managed to hurt the Guillemot brothers by taking over their other company, Gameloft. Ubisoft has had some challenges and yet they're still making games today. What does the future hold for them? Only time will tell. Hello everybody, thanks for watching the video. If you did, why don't you check out this playlist because I bet you'll enjoy more video game history. And if you don't, why don't you try checking out some of my other stuff. I also want to thank my friend Jared for making a slight cameo in this video. You should check out his channel or the one that I run with him. Links are in the description. Again, thanks for watching. See you next time.